Okay, guys, welcome to Through These Brown Eyes. And I am coming to you with a seventh grade running story. And you can't see me because I look like crap. So I decided to draw on a whiteboard. Hey! So I'm going to start this video by saying um, I'm not exactly the most athletic person. Uh, my mom was a track and basketball star, in her words, anyway. So you can imagine. Um, but I wanted to be athletic because she was athletic. But the problem was is that I'm way too calm for sports. When my heart rate goes up, I immediately figure out a way to bring it back down. I was a theater kid in high school, so people weren't really yelling at you the entire show. There were a nice few claps at intermission, and then there were some claps at the end of the show. That's it. I like relaxing, reading, and writing stories. Psh. I even start to meditate if someone's talking to me for too long. But when your mom's entire youth was spent sweating and hearing loud crowds cheer with obnoxious, be aggressive, be, be aggressive. God, that's a stupid cheer. People like me, who play recreationally, can't survive the aggressive lifestyle. But I could tell my mom wanted me to be a part of the sports culture, so I did volleyball. But I could tell she wanted a little bit more for me. Straight disclaimer right now, I don't run. I hate running. Now, to the story. So to feel more connected to her, I joined the track team in seventh grade. God forbid I joined as an actual runner. Instead, I decided to be the manager. I didn't bring individual people water bottles though. I don't do stuff like that. I mostly just did chores for the coach and I motivated people. Very simple job. So I was chilling on the bench at one track meet doing my homework. I would throw out a, yeah, you can do this every so often. And just as I'm calculating the last answer for the last math problem on my homework, the coach comes over. He's like, can yay? He sounded a little hesitant. And now that I know what he was gonna ask me, that's why he sounded hesitant. Cause he knew his request was absurd. And I'm like, yeah. And he says, well, Carla, I don't really know the girl's name, but Carla, we're gonna call her that, got sick and I need you to run the four by 800 in her place. <laughs> For those of you who don't know what a four by 800 is, that's where it's you and three other people run around a 400 meter track two times. So that's about a standard high school track. To give you a short snippet of my skills in running, um, I once ran a 5K and I ran for 20 seconds and the rest of the time I walked. Not exaggerating whatsoever. So I'm like, um, I, I don't run. That's all I could get out, only words I could say. And he's like, well, you're running today. He smirks, tosses me a tracksuit. So I put on these shorts and this jersey looking thing. And I don't wear shorts because I like covering myself long deep-seated issues so I'm already uncomfortable and they literally have to show me how to hold the baton. Hand-eye coordination? Pfft, atrocious. Now if they put me in the middle maybe we would have had a chance to win but they put me last. The person who goes first and the person who go last make the race. They decide if you get a medal or a consolation prize. And I knew he wasn't slick. He knew he didn't coach this team well, so he was trying to figure out who to blame for the loss. And that responsibility fell on my shoulders. The gun goes off, and I'm already startled. <laughs> People are running, and I'm cheering them on because that's my usual job as manager, not a runner. And it wasn't until I saw the third person running around that I thought I was going to cry. She hands me the baton, and I start running. I'm pretty proud of myself because I make it halfway around this track without even getting tired. 200 meters, mm, personal best right there. And then the lactic acid starts to build up in my legs, you know, nothing but pins and needles. So I start to jog very, very slowly. That jog turns into a walk, a power walk. So, you know, I'm doing fine. Um, then the other runners are way ahead of me already on the second lap. And I can't even make it. I make it one time around and I can't do it anymore. I'm leisurely walking around the track and I hear my team screaming for me to keep running. And in my head, I'm like, oh, you people don't care about my well-being. So I block them out. I am going so slow. One girl stops running to ask me if I'm okay. She's like, you okay? And she looks really worried. She's a girl from another team. 
and I legit tell her, girl, I'm fine. I don't run. Um, I can't run and I'm tired. So I'm just going to keep going this speed until I cross that white line. My breathing is fine at this point. So hypothetically speaking, I could start running again. But this was more of a middle finger to the coach that made me do this in the first place. <laughs> the girl laughs and she actually walks with me. And we talk for like a minute. She waves goodbye, starts running again. And since I'm an encourager, I'm like, you go, girl. I'm so slow. They can't start the next race because I haven't finished yet. So once I finally crossed, my team is cheering because, you know, I finally finished. And the coach was so mad. But I still took a lunchbox from the cooler and a Gatorade because in my eyes, I was a runner. Or at least a participant. I even got a cute yellow ribbon for it for the fourth place, which was which was last place. But it looks nice up on my wall at home. <laughs>